The FNX45 Tactical and the Airsoft FNX45 Tactical both break down in the same exact manner. Both of them have slide levers found on the right side of the gun, which allow you to remove the slide. I'll demonstrate with the Airsoft because it's a little easier. The slide needs to be pulled back, the lever is switched down, and the entire slide will slide off. The magazine does need to be out for this to happen. The same exact process is done with the real steel. Of course, it is a heavier pull because we are dealing with a heavier steel. We can see here that the slides are almost identical on the inside. Of course, the major difference is the hop-up unit on the airsoft version, and of course the gas flow. But both of them have the same exact spring setups, and both of them are holding in the barrels in the position. Overall, they're identical, even down to the measurements. Here we have a collection of the back straps that come with the pistol. As you can see, we have four black ones and two tan ones. The black ones, of course, are the real steel. And you've noticed we have two horizontal versions and two waffle pattern versions. And the airsoft versions, we see we only have the horizontal pattern. Now this horizontal pattern is duplicating up against the front end of the grip and of course the waffle patterns are duplicating the side pattern on the grip of the gun. As you can see the airsoft version does not even come with the option of the waffle patterns. Now there are two large and two small and I've set them up so you can kind of get a feel for how they are. I'll be honest when I first bought these or I got them with the gun they were very, very difficult to remove. This took a lot of time. You can even see some of the damage done just trying to get that off. And it's really a surprise I was able to get the other back strap off just now. The funny thing is, is they're both identically designed. They operate exactly the same way the airsoft ones do as the real steel. And I thought, hey, let's give it a try. Let's see if I can stick a real steel back strap onto an airsoft gun. Well, I got about a quarter of the way on and it became incredibly difficult and I just stopped right there. So they are cut just a tad bit different. But if you've ever seen the back straps, they're really basically plastic. So a little bit of filing or sanding, you could get them to fit. But if you really, really are desperate, I'm pretty certain they're going to make these waffle patterns. Now I'm going to just go ahead and pick up the flat one here, or the small size, and I'm going to go ahead and match it on up. And as you can see, they are practically identical. There's really no way of telling the difference between the two of them. They even feel the same. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the large ones here. You can see they have a lot more girth to this one. And they both operate the same exact way. You can see the ridge in there and how they attach on. And just to show you what the waffle pattern will look like so you have an idea of what they look like. But they've got that nice, wonderful texture on it, just like on the side of the handgun. Okay, so we're just going to do a quick once-over on the magazines here. Uh, once again, as a reminder, the black one is real steel. The tan one is airsoft. So let's go ahead and start with the real steel. As we can see here, it has the holes punched in it, showing that it'll hold up to 15 rounds, starting with 5, going all the way down to 15. Once again, as a reminder, if you live in a state that doesn't allow these type of size magazines, they'll give you a 10-round magazine. You can see the dark black sort of metal appearance. It's been subdued so that the shine won't be noticeable. We're going to go ahead and pick up the airsoft version here. And this is, of course, much heavier. This is where all your weight comes from in the gun. And you can see that the metal color is a little bit different. I'm just going to bring them on up against each other here. Let's, see, let's do it that way so to get really close in. And you can see that the silver is definitely different. Now, the funny thing is, is my first exposure to the airsoft 45X Tactical was at Irene 12 through Amped Airsoft and their version this was very very silver it was very bright and I thought maybe that was intentional trying to match up with the tan I also thought maybe the real steel version the tan ones would be more uh, more brighter silver so I went home I checked a look online I found out no that's not the case all of them should match this color here so this is a little off. Here's the funny thing is, this is actually an improvement. I got this one through eHobby Asia, and this is an improvement in the color. So they're slowly making uh, changes to their mold and to some of their paint jobs to try and match them just a little bit better. I did go ahead and order a second magazine. That cost me $39, and you can get those through eHobby Asia. 
Right now, that's the only place I know where you can get them. We're going to talk a little more on that. What we're going to do is we're going to look at one of the little things I noticed on this. This is like probably the worst part in the trades or stamps. You can see right here that we have, there's a little red light for my GoPro bounces off the black magazine. You can see that the holes punched in here are different than the real steel holes. We've got the 15 rounds, but they all go in a straight line, not a double line. So that's just sort of a little mistake. You've also noticed here the valve is up here at the top. And of course the flow valve is also where it should be. I got a little worried about this when I first saw it. I was concerned about things like filling it up and leaks. After all, when you get a leaky magazine, we usually stick the valves to our ears trying to listen for where the gas is leaking out. And granted, all we have to do is stick our ear to this one spot, but it's going to be hard to determine which valve it is. And I think the main reasoning for this is they didn't want to mess up this symbol here. The FN Herschel symbol is prominently displayed on both magazines in the proper locations. So, the other thing is, I did find this was not a big issue to fill up. All I had to do was cut my hand like so. I took my can of green gas, uh, which was called Lightning Bolt, made in the USA. I attached the valve right in there and it filled up without an incident. And we're going to go into, of course, how much gas it holds and how well it did. Once again, this holds 25 rounds, so 10 more than the real steel, of course, and costs $39. Now, before you panic and you think that's really bad, CyberGun's actually giving you a deal on that. Because this little baby, even though it holds 15 rounds, to replace this costs $50, no joke. So, to have something twice as heavy with more working parts in it, hold 10 more rounds, and granted, the trades are just a little off here, and only cost $39 when this one costs $50. Uh, this is one of the few values you're going to be getting out of that. Here we can see a top view of both guns. One, of course, being the real steel, the other being airsoft. Now, we're going to be discussing two things. One, they do have trades here, both saying 45 APC. And as I pointed out previously, it's difficult to see the trades on the real steel only because they seem to be some sort of laser engravement. You'll also notice up here at the top, there seems to be some very fine writing. We're going to go over about that a little later on. Also, you'll notice that there's a little white dot on the inside of the site rather than in here. Again, we'll go over that a little later on. What we're going to discuss right now are these. These are the plates that can be removed to attach the red dot apertures. Now, the real steel uses star screws. They do come with the Allen wrench set, as well as the plates to attach any kind of Trictacon sites that you're going to need. These are standard Allen wrench screws and they're a much smaller size. It also does not come with any plates to attach any upcoming red dot apertures. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove them so you can get a chance to see what they look like. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed the screws off the real steel and the airsoft version. I'm going to go ahead and remove the plates now so you get a feel for what it's like. The real steel is a heavy, heavy metal and you can clearly see it's been machined out. It also has a variety of different holes, some of them being screw holes, some of them being attachment pins which will allow the red dot apertures and trictacon sites for attachment. Now the airsoft version is completely different. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. It's a much lighter metal and it has two small little pegs on it and these are attached right here up the top. And it also has this sort of unique rail system which only allows it to use airsoft variation plates. And as I mentioned, we're going to go over that a little later on. But here's something I thought was kind of neat. I'm going to place this on here and even though the black one doesn't fit on the tan one, it's kind of hard to see, but the screw holes do match up. So they did a really good job of at least getting the adapter pieces to be dead on. On top of it, you can see there's actually very little room around there. There's very little tolerances. So this is a really well done piece. And I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to come out for the FN Herschel. Okay, so these are the red dot aperture plates which are used to attach onto the top of the slide for the real steel and the airsoft gun. Now these two metal plates here, the lighter color ones are the real steel. These are made out of steel and of course come with the firearm. They also come with the Allen screws that you need to attach them on. They're actually star set as well as the Allen wrench is also star set to attach them on. This here is an aftermarket part for the airsoft gun. It's produced by Accusa Dynamics, and you can buy this off of eHobby Asia. You notice it's got a matte black finish to it, and as you can see, it sort of has a little bit of a rough texture to it.
No screws come with this in any way, shape, or form. It just comes in a single little package. And I intentionally did not clean these yet, but you can actually see that there's still burrs inside the holes. So it does need a little bit of attention before you attach it on. When I first handled this, I thought it was plastic. And the only way I confirmed that it wasn't was they didn't get the full paint job on right up in here. You can actually see some of the bare metal being exposed. So it's a very light metal. Now I just discovered that eHobby Asia also sells another version. It's the PAS RMR red dot aperture attachment. And that actually comes with two star screws with the kit, but it's about $20. So I'm assuming it's gonna be a better quality than the $11. And once again, just a reminder, the Airsoft version has no attachments like this. This is completely aftermarket parts, just like what hopefully will occur with the back straps. Okay, what you're looking at here are Trinium night sights on the Real Steel FNX45 Tactical. Now you're not gonna find anything like this on the Airsoft one, but I just wanted to show you these because I did mention it in the review. These are basically radioactive. They're designed to always glow no matter what. So they're very effective, very helpful. And I'm in, as, as you can see, a completely pitch black environment. And I'm still able to line up my sights while holding a camera. So don't expect to find these on the Airsoft version. But if you're wondering what those small little holes are on the sights, it's representing these little marks here. When testing the Airsoft FNX45 Tactical, we used 0.25 Elite 4 6mm biodegradable ammunition tested on a 3200 chronograph in an indoor range at 75 degrees. Green gas was used, which was infused with silicone oil, and was manufactured by Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt is out of the United States, California to be specific, and it recommends its product being used at 70 degrees temperature at 115 PSI plus or minus. 25 shots were loaded within the magazines and it was a very easy fill. The very first shot came in at 341.6 FPS. It was a loud and short trigger pull, which was refreshing to find on such an airsoft gun. All the shots were in the 300 range with the exception of two. A 298.2 shot and a 297.7 shot, which was the very last shot. On the 10th shot, we tried something. We used the decocking lever to see if the gun would fire. Unfortunately, it did. It fired at 308.2 FPS, which is important to note because this was about average with everything else. So the decocking lever is really for show. It's not a safety feature. On the 11th shot, we noticed something as well. The serial number fell off. I was a little disappointed in that, but I'm glad that happened on an indoor range where I was able to find it. So before bringing this out to the range, you may want to take a few seconds and check this. I used Loctite Super Glue, which is now permanently attached. The slide does lock back after the final shot, and the slide catch doesn't have the nice crisp locking sound that the real steel has, but this is an airsoft and it is a lighter metal. Okay, in conclusion on the airsoft FNX 45 tactical. A gentleman asked me a question, he says, would you buy this gun again? I think that's a pretty fair question. The answer is yes, I would buy this gun again. However, my reasons are going to be a little bit different than the average airsofter. Remember, I own the real steel. To me, I can use this as a training tool. I can practice muscle memory with a non-lethal weapon. More importantly, though, that I need to point out, finding holsters for this is going to be very, very difficult. In fact, I had to do an online search, and the only holsters I can find are Blade Tech, and they run about $70. So if this is a new purchase for you, you have to think about that. Other than that, in conclusion, I thank you very much for watching this long and involved review, and I hope this answered a lot of questions. When you're out there at the field, make sure you wear a full seal eye pro. You make sure that your guns are in locked cases and out of public view, and you always remove your magazines before and after transportation. Also make sure that your magazines are out when you're in the staging area, and you do not display these in public areas.